Vladimir Putin must pay. That's what leaders have been saying from around the world in reaction to the news that Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has died in prison. Reports of his death, if they're true, and I have no reason to believe it or not, Russian authorities are going to tell their own story. But make no mistake, make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. Well, the UK Foreign Secretary, Lord David Cameron, says that Putin should be held accountable for what's happened. No one should doubt the dreadful nature of his regime, quote unquote. Uh, Navalny, meanwhile, he was serving a 19 year prison sentence after being convicted of extremism and fraud following his vocal opposition to Vladimir Putin's regime. The Russian prison service said Navalny collapsed and lost consciousness during a walk. His widow, Yulia, has pleaded to the world to punish Putin. I want to call on the entire world community, everyone in this room and people around the world, that we come together to unite and defeat this evil, defeat the horrific regime that is now in Russia. All right, joining me now is the host of GB News uh, Saturday Five show, which is on tonight, 7 to 8, we'll be on there with the man himself, Darren Grimes, and political correspondent Emma Burnell. Darren, let me start with you. Um, this, of course, comes off the back of Tucker Carlson's now infamous interview with Vladimir Putin last week. The, the timing is interesting, isn't it? Why would Putin execute a political rival just when all the eyes of the world are on him following that Tucker Carlson interview? Well, we've just seen footage actually in the mail of his mother coming out of the prison and saying, look, I want my son's body back and all the rest of it. So we do have some confirmation now, at least, that he is actually dead yeah. and uh, you know the question marks remain around what's happened and how it's been done. He was perfectly fine on Wednesday when his lawyer was with him and he was his usual gregarious gallows humour self, you know he had a quick wit, almost British in his wit actually. Mm. Um, so it's a deeply sad state of affairs but I think actually to a certain extent, Tucker has been President Putin's useful idiot. Mm. I mean, we saw footage of him, and Emma, I think we'll actually agree on this. And this is getting embarrassing, is, Darren. It we're it starting is. to agree really far is. too often. Because he, I saw footage of Tucker in a Russian supermarket, and he was talking about the, <laughs> the, the, the merits of... Uh, and the actually the way in which you can put a, yeah, yeah, a oh coin into a, a trolley and receive a <laughs> trolley. And, and I thought, has he been to any Asda in the United Kingdom or wherever else? Other supermarkets are, of course, available <laughs> and I actually I worry that actually this has all been part of a, a ploy to actually boost Russia's uh, international recognition mm. because the, all eyes were on him again right they had taken their eyes off Russia and the Ukraine because of the fact that Israel and Gaza have been on the, na uh, the nation and the world's mind mm. so I am a bit concerned that actually Tucker has been played to a large extent. Emma, Tucker has been embarrassed I mean Nigel Farage told me yesterday that he was pretty uh, disappointed with his interview he didn't press him and do you know what even Putin came out himself and said I was surprised at how bad. Yeah Putin said Tucker it was Carlson too softball was. an interview that's I mean how, how does that I mean maybe I'm just connecting the dots but how does that coincide with the death now of, uh, of Alexei? Well, I think the thing that we need to look at um, in terms of the timing is the Munich conference. This was done to troll world leaders and to make it very clear by Putin um, that he is playing by his own rules and his own game. And there is a vast misunderstanding, I think, that nobody took Putin seriously enough for lo um, soon enough. And the fact that he was um, so willing to abuse his own citizens first, then uh, the invasion of Ukraine, I just think we all need to be taking the threat that he is to world stability so much more seriously than we have been. And that probably starts with this one very high profile case. Yeah. Go on, Darren. I mean, Nigel was saying, Nigel Nelson was just saying to you, Ben, about actually how people should go out and spoil their ballot if they don't want to vote, and actually speaking about the importance of democracy. Well, people mourning the death of Navalny oh. on the streets of Russia have actually been arrested, yeah. right? People are being yeah. clamped down think upon. Yeah, arrests. Uh, yeah. So I think it's, it's a really important point that Nigel raises, actually, and one that we should be mightily aware of. But I would say I think it's terribly naive of people like Lord David Cameron to turn around and say, actually, Putin must be punished. What are we supposed to do? We cannot go to war with these people. I think that sort of rhetoric is actually incredibly dangerous because... Ultimately, what Navalny's death has shown is that Putin now has political 
uh, invulnerability. He is no longer vulnerable at the ballot box. He has managed to see off his biggest opposition, quite literally see him off. Yeah, well, yeah. Quite. And I'm not sure that this kind of rhetoric from uh, our foreign secretary is at all useful or uh, actually at all remotely viable uh, or s sensible. And Emma, do you know what? I'm, I'm, you know, I love my country. I'm quite patriotic. But what on earth? Does, uh, do our leaders think we are going to do in a military conflict with Russia? So I don't think it's about us going into a war, well, hot been, war with Russia. Well, they've been picking it up the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's more about, uh, they have, um, but again, I think that is largely pre-budget um, MOD uh, <laughs> positioning. But um, there are things that we can do. Uh, we could, for example, put much more pressure on, for example, the Republican Party in the US to step up and help to fund the war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine is where the front line is happening and I know some Ukrainians who who, who have come over here as refugees as a result um, you know they are incredibly passionate about the need not just for that war to be won for their own country but because that is you know if if it doesn't stop in Ukraine there are other places former Iron Curtain countries that could are absolutely terrified that they will be next and um, that is what I mean by taking Putin seriously. It's not a case of us, us saying, oh, yeah, we're going to invade Russia tomorrow. Um, I don't right, want to go down uh, the Kenny Everett route. A, a, a lot of our viewers would say, is, is our bottomless pit of taxpayer money to fund this war in Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine, is it sustainable? Do we want to keep sending billions and billions? The Republicans in America are umming and ahhing about sending another, what, 90 billion? Is that an issue or have they got a, a, a good point? Well, I think Emma has a point in that things are going to change in the United States of America. You know, the, the Democrats may well be on their way out if Poland is to be, be believed and President Trump back in office. Now, what does that mean for Ukraine? Because if the United States position changes, we are not spending anywhere near enough, Ben, on defence in this country. So the idea that we can continue to support Ukraine on our own yeah. or with other European allies is for the birds. So actually what America does, I'm afraid that to a large extent, and we've been talking this morning, you and I, about uh, the way in which the United States of America is seeking extradition of uh, Julian Assange, for well, example. Yeah. So all of these things are called into question, and the, the, the nature of uh, what we do I think is, is reflected by what America wants to happen. Emma, I, I will make that point. Julian Assange has been rotting in Belmarsh since 2019, with no trial. Before that, he was holed away in the dusty uh, Ecuadorian embassy because he uh, committed the crime of releasing and exposing American war crimes. It's rank hypocrisy, isn't it, from the likes of David Cameron? Look, I, I don't have a strong point on Julian Assange. There are other things that I would take issue with him over, um, over and above WikiLeaks, which I think has played an important role in, in putting sunlight into um, certain areas and at other times has played a considerably less um, salubrious role. Mm. Um, so I think that there are questions to be asked about Julian Assange himself and WikiLeaks as a whole as an organisation where it's done right and wrong. But I think in terms of... Um, what changes in American foreign policy might mm. have. If you, when we're talking about investing in defence, when we're talking about investing money in Ukraine, we know that that war in Ukraine has cost us not the money that we're putting in, um, in just in sending um, support to the Ukrainians. It's more because of the way that the Russian aggression there has raised world prices. And when we are saying we have to be strong, part of that is to make sure that things, yeah, that things like gas prices come down, that we have gas security in the UK. That is a, an important part of our national security programme that we've well, let completely would it been, drop. Would it be good if we became self-sustainable and built some nuclear power stations 10 years ago when we had... Well, the start, indeed, so. I couldn't agree more.